Testing, testing. I hope it's working. I think the microphone is working properly, but I'm paranoid now. I don't know what is going on with this hat today. It is not cooperating whatsoever. It is like really mad at me right now. And it's making me nervous. My head is too big for this, honestly. But we're just going to let it like pinch my brain cells while I talk to you guys. <laughs> so anyways, I'm sorry for not having like a more set time. Oh gosh, I don't even know if this is even going, but whatever. Hello, you guys. I'm here. I don't know if it was starting yet. I was just saying that my hat is weird. Um, How are you guys going? I'm going to go ahead and put this on live chat. And yeah, we're going to get started. I'm going to start reading comments soon. But I just want to say emphatically that Leo Skeppi is on academic probation from the University of Fatness. I you know, it's quite the scandal and it's definitely something that we're quite upset about here at FU. <laughs> Anyways, um, so <laughs> let's see. This week was interesting. Um, I don't know why, but I always am so crazy, like exhausted after the gym. And today is no different. Um, this, I love how I tried to turn this and it went the wrong way. I love that. Okay. I'm just going to leave it because it's going to, it's not going to agree with me whatsoever. Okay. You guys, any other updates I want to say before? Um, just, I'm sorry that I didn't start this earlier, but I was dying. I'm tired. I get super tired post gym. Okay. Other announcements I want to say is I did a collab with Not David or David that is listed on a community post. I should link it on the stream after, but if you're interested, I kind of, you know, I went on his channel and I talked about a lot of the issues that I talk about in terms of FA, weight loss, et cetera. So I went ahead and did that and... Yeah, I was watching it and I was kind of like, I hope my messaging was clear. I think it's tough because a lot of what I say is totally new. And that's tough. It's tough because a lot of times people don't quite understand sometimes or they do understand, which is great. But I'm still working on that, essentially. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about today is that kind of thing. It's just, so it's interesting to go on his channel and have some of my ideas more challenged where I could argue back and forth because that's the thing. I can argue about these issues for sure. Um, but yeah, I notice a lot of people, there's a couple of things that weird me, not weird me out, but people are very attached to like, I've noticed throughout the couple years I've been doing this. Hello, Lindsay. Yes, we're back at FU, as I call it, Fat University. <laughs> and Leo Skeppi is on academic probation, as I said. But anyways, so basically, I, I am... I find that when people first hear about what I'm talking about, the the two there's they're really attached for some reason to seed oil consumption and soy. For some reason, those two things. When I first started, it was seed oil consumption. Like people were really, really, really attached to it. Like as if I'm like, you know, trying to take away a binky from a baby you know, with some people online, like they're not all obviously, but they're very, very attached to that. And I never understood that. And I still don't because it's not like you smell a cookie and think, oh my gosh, this cookie smells so canola-y or wow, I'm really excited to have this soybean oil and in, in this, in these French fries. Mm, like people don't really think that it's like, you're usually liking the other stuff like the potato, the salt, the sauce that you're using, right? Like there's always something else that you're actually caring about. So it was really weird to me when I first started talking about this, how people were so attached. 
And the other thing I found is soy. So I don't know why. I feel like with soy, there is some kind of political bias or something with soy where people, they almost have like this strangely political or religious devotion to soy. Um, you know, oftentimes when I talk about soy, I'm talking about, especially within the confines of a super morbidly obese person's experience, which is a very specific physical state to be in. Um, one thing I hear a lot is that soy is completely unrelated to estrogen in the human body, and that is not true. We literally have examples. You guys will remember the famous guy where he drank like a gallon of soy milk a day and he developed boobs because the estrogen was so high. And I think people don't understand, like they take everything in such a black and white, like stance. So it's like, if I criticize soy at all, that means that soy is completely evil and that nobody can ever have it for the entirety of their entire life. Or if I support soy, like as if it's a political cause, then I have to accept and encourage soy to be in literally everything that I eat. And so it's it's interesting. <laughs> I'm so glad, Lindsay. Um, it's really interesting the the feedback I get. Because I mean, you have to think like, I'm talking about somebody who's super morbidly obese, somebody who's extremely hypothyroid. Soy is not good for that type of person. I would completely eliminate it for a time at least, especially if you have a fatty liver. It's terrible because if you have a fatty liver, your body has issues getting rid of excess estrogen. Because they'll say like, oh, well, soy was not sig statistically significant in human beings, I guess, but were they testing super morbidly obese people and how much soy were they giving them for how long? Because I don't think people understand, like when I say something like weed is estrogenic, are you smoking it every single day? Are you waking and baking every day and doing it all day long? You know what I'm saying? That's a huge difference than somebody who uses it once a month tops or once a year. It's like, is it going to have a huge impact on you? No. Think about the habits you're having every day. Are you having tons of soy every single day? And are you really hungry and struggling with losing weight? Or are you really tired and moody? The answer is yes, then eliminate the damn soy. Sorry, I have to take your binky away. You know, I think the diet that I advocate for is very, very permissive and extremely open compared to what other people say, but heaven forbid there's any boundaries at all. And I think that that's something that is frustrating from an activistic standpoint that I do have to understand and that I'm still working to understand because I don't understand the psychology of like rushing to the defense of soy. I think a lot of the people that do that are vegan and that might be why, because they're vegan, you know, so they have like a religious cause with veganism. And I just worry about that religion of veganism being in our institutions or taking over academic studies and doing this kind of stuff. Because I've seen that where they will literally lie about everything because they have an agenda. So I don't trust it. You know, there's a lot of activism in academia as well. And I've seen it a lot in the vegan space. So I do think that they kind of do that too. So just be wary, you guys, if you're really, really fat, like you probably shouldn't have soy. Just, I'm going to be the one to tell you, okay? Um, don't let somebody else's political or religious cause cause you death or cause you to not be able to lose the weight that you need to lose. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to get into the comments. Hello, Lottie. Um, <laughs> we're going to get into this. As you guys know, I'm the fat scholar. This is always on the right side because not only are we on the right side of history, but we're also always learning. So we never quite graduate. Okay. <laughs> we don't ever graduate because we don't want to get a real job. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what happens here at FU. <laughs> so... The first video I had this week was um, my short. So I decided to do my short because I was 
I knew that the eclipse was happening that day. And I do care about this, the astrological significance of the eclipse. I do, you know, I'm, I'm an astrology girly, but for me, ironically enough, it was in my area of health. And so the realization of that eclipse was just that these two twin demons I had been fighting, which are BED and hypothyroidism or super mor primarily super morbid obesity, um, is basically over, you know, cause I got out of SMO this year and maybe ED, I would describe it as demonstrably in remission. So what that means is like, I've lost weight. I've been able to keep it off for multiple years. I've haven't binged, especially for like an emotional reason. Like there've been times where I've eaten a lot, but it's different than binging. So I haven't done that in, in like almost four years, it'll be four years in October. So to me, that is so in remission. It's not even funny. And so that short was just kind of like a celebration. Hello, Peyton. It was just like a celebration of the fact that I got through it. And it was also a way to kind of share my story in a very concise, short way. Because I haven't, you know, it, 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 it's hard to sit here and do a video where I talk about like, oh, you guys, I did this, this, and this, and this. Whereas in the short, it was like, I could describe the entire journey within a minute and you could see it. And it's like emotional and kind of quick and impactful and you could see it. And so I think that that's really, that was something I needed to do. And I'd been thinking about doing that short for a long time. I wanted to do it when I wasn't SMO anymore. And um, the eclipse day, it just turned out to be the best day because I knew that people would be busy with that and they probably wouldn't be watching other stuff. And so that's why I posted it. But I will say it was hard to do because it's hard to dance and stuff and have some kind of rhythm when you're fat as hell. So it was kind of a challenge. But I had thought out my own choreography and all that, like, a long time in advance. I thought about it a lot, like, in February, because I was almost out of SMO. Um, Lottie says, congratulations on your weight loss and good luck on your future improvement. Thank you so much. And Magda is here. Congrats. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read these comments really quick. These are pretty quick. Lindsay says, I love your transformational take about weight loss and how so much changes, not just the scale. Yes. And I'm glad you like the fat scholar, Miss Girl. <laughs> um, look, FA, they get, they give me content for days. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and just look at the comments. There wasn't a lot of comments on this short, so it should be quick. So Lindsay says, looking so good, Alex. Thank you, Lindsay. She's here. Um, Jody Humphrey says, what a journey you took me on in just a few seconds. You are so amazing and have definitely helped so many people, including myself, by sharing that journey. I really appreciate that comment. Um, you know, I just, I'm really trying to represent these aspects of obesity that are hardly ever actually talked about. And that's why I made the channel, you know, because unlike a Leo Skeppy fan, if I see something not being made, then I'm going to make it, you know, I'm not just going to be angry and talk crap about everybody forever, like his fans and probably like him too. So Sophia says, Sophia says, damn straight. Also, I know you're into Western astrology, but if you've ever been curious about the Chinese Zodiac, it's kind of crazy. It's the year of the wood dragon and time for us to reap what we've sown. I've actually done a, a live stream about the year of the dragon on my other channel. So I am aware and I hearted it and it's like, yeah, that person's dead on. As far as Chinese Zodiac, this is a year where we reap what we've sown. This is a very karmic year, 2024. So really the stuff that you've been working on from 2019 till 2023, especially really later, like early half of 2023, those particular years, this is the time where we reap what we've sown. And for me, it's very true because I worked a lot on my diet and weight. I like this thing because it makes me feel like I have hair. 
Um, but yeah, I, I'm more so reaping what I've sown. Like my health is drastically better, especially this year. I'm having so much more mental health improvement. I think that's why I've been able to be more creative. I also have more energy, which is why I compose more. Um, I'm also just healthier in general. Like I feel like I'm really past the darkest point or the really the hardest time of this journey. And that's kind of what I've been focusing on this year. And then now, like, because I am better mentally, I can collab and stuff. And like, I'm not as shy or unconfident. I was very, very unconfident last year. It was really hard because I was going through that serotonin storm, which for those of you guys who have followed me throughout last year, I talked a lot about it. Um, Miss Girl says, Leo is ratchet. You ate him up. He is. I agree. Lottie says, I still don't get why Leo didn't use the DT. I'll just say that he got as his excuse to why he deleted his video. It would have put him in such a better light than just being a flake. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, it also would have helped anti-FA because it would have shown how vile they are. Okay. So that's everything for the short. Um, it was fun. It was fun to do the dance and everything. I also made sure I wore lover pink. <laughs> because that's the intro. Anyways, so let's go ahead and go to the first Leo video. And we'll go into the comments. So I don't think I got very many negative comments on this. Um, I think most people were supportive. This is the, the pre-phase, not the post-phase. But this is when he had spoken out against FA logic. Um, yeah, they only proved his original point by getting mad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true. And he could have used that against them, but he's not intelligent. It was funny. I was talking, I was talking a little bit ish on um, David's stream last night. And I was like, Leo is dumb or Leo has, doesn't have a functioning brain. And David was like, yes, he does. He's smart, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I was like, no, he's a pussy. It's <laughs> basically what I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're learning from the witch too. The witch is like one of the star, the folklore witch is one of the star pupils at, at FU. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to get promoted to the Dean of Fatness over here. Um, they only proved his original point. We already read that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and read these. So I don't, this is when we were on his side. Okay. Let me just start at the newest and go through. I love how my leg fell asleep. Yes. Hello, Jens. One day we'll reach the infinity stones of fat hats. Yeah, that'd be interesting. We'll see. There's always more hats. There's always more. <laughs> Whatever, wherever the inspiration takes me. Okay, I'm an extra. Okay, so Shannon says, I'm an extra, extra small. And most brands don't have true XXS because of the rise of vanity sizing. But I don't bitch about it. I just go in the kids section and shut up. It is what it is. LOL. I'm going to heart it. Yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, if you're not an average size, then it can be a struggle to find clothes. I mean, that's a very obvious basic take. For me, I'm not massively tall in my opinion, but I am 6'1". And a lot of the shirts that are at like Walmart. Oh my God, I love that, Lottie. <laughs> but for um, for me, I'm not massively tall. I'm 6'1". And the shirts, they like, you know, the belly, the hanging belly, it likes to peek. It likes to poke its little head out from the bottom of a shirt because they're not really made for me. They're made for more of an average height, which I can understand that I can still wear it. You know, I'm not Leo Skeppy. I'm not 6'7". I'm not all that. But it's like I can, you know, it can maybe be a little short or it's like not the most fat friendly, like of a three X, for example. And I just deal with it. You just deal, you know, 
And for me, it's like, I don't really mind the low key crop top look because I am literally gay. So it doesn't matter if I look gay. And so I'll be fine. I just don't really want the belly poking through and all that. That's scarring, you know, that can be a little intense, but I, I make do, you make do. I mean, plus there's also the curse of clothing shopping where no matter what your size is, it's not there. So like when I was a three X, I would go to Walmart and try to get like, I wear a lot of these, like, ooh, can I get my leg up here? We're going to test. We're going to tempt fate. Oh, I wear a lot of these. Oh my God. I can't, you can kind of see. So it's like a fake bullshit athletic pant fabric. Cause I have an active job. And so I wear a lot of the, gosh, I'm getting my leg up there like that. I got to practice. No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyways, so I do a lot. I wear a lot of these and I didn't have like, when I was a 3X, I could never find a 3X at Walmart, ever. Like, go to multiple Walmarts, look at all of them, never find it, right? Then I lost weight. Now I got to, like, a 2X. Then I go to the store, and this is probably around, like, 2022, like, or, you know, especially last year, I was more of a 2X. And I go to look for the pants. There's no 2X. None. There's tons of 3X now. There's like 5 million pairs of them, right? I, I could like walk through any Walmart and there's just 5 million pairs of 3X pants and shorts and shirts and everything. And I can still wear a 3X as a shirt, but not pants. My Most of my weight has lost in my legs. It's very male coded. I have a very male pattern weight loss. So I was like, okay. And so now I've been looking for shorts because in this summer... I'm probably going to have to wear a 1X, which is crazy because a 1X is getting towards small fat territory, which we've talked about. And I'll have to talk about that a lot because I'm starting to get out of the mid fat zone, out of the deaf phase. And I'm really happy to be out of the deaf phase because it's awful. Can I just say being a mid fat is the worst on a social level. So I'm kind of breaking through. And so I'm getting to that 1X territory in terms of shorts. So I go to Walmart. I look for shorts. None. There's 2X. There's 3X. No 1X. So it doesn't matter. It's the curse of clothes shopping. No matter what size you are, you will not find it. (laughs) Thank you, Lottie. (laughs) You will not find it. And that's just the way it is. So just, you know... I don't know why that happens, but it does seem to happen. And I asked my friend Eric about it and he's like, yeah, that always happens to me too. Cause I think he's a large, he can never find a large. It's like, you can never find what size you are. Like, it's just the thing. Okay. Um, Aaron on the trail says it's amusing how Samira's whole reputation is quote. I know what I'm talking about. I went to Harvard, but when she does response videos, she just makes weird faces. I loved that comment. I think that was so funny and so accurate. And honestly, (laughs) it's just so cringe because to me, it's like, I don't find that particularly like rhetorically strong or very convincing, but I guess to somebody dumb, like Leo, it works, you know, I guess so. I didn't think it would work. Um, so Cherish says, I agree with Leo. Some of these stores already don't cater to extended sizes. Some will accommodate and some won't. I remember seeing his, this dress on uh, Boohoo that went up to size 20. I was a 22 then. I just said to myself, oh, well, and had to lower my size. Basically, you know, you just try to work within the confines of reality. I mean, the thing is, is like Leo's take, it was not that it was not a bad take. It was pretty milk toast. Actually, it was very like center of the road, which is fine. You know, not everybody has to be like so far one way or the other, but it was just like, this is not, a, it wasn't even controversial. Honestly, I don't think I'm surprised that F.A. was able to convince anybody that it was controversial what he said, because it really wasn't. It was almost so not controversial. It was almost worth just not even saying. 
in my opinion. Um, yes, Becca says, it really is important to take it out of just clothing. Imagine I find a stationery shop and I love their stuff, but they don't make anything that fits my aesthetic. Am I supposed to cry about it? <laughs> or am I supposed to cry and call them names because they don't cater to me? It's just a silly concept. It really is. You know, just shop somewhere else. It's not a big deal. It really isn't. Um, so ABB or Abmac says, for real, there one of the top stitches to Leo's video was someone saying that his take was a hop, skip, and a step away from making slavery legal again. And it got nearly 25K likes. Some people are too stupid for this world. That is wild. It's like the amount of reaching these people have to do is literally like backbreaking. Like they must be backbreaking, you know? It's crazy. Um, and then somebody, Zom, oh my gosh, the names, I struggle so much. I hate how they constantly bring race into things to bolster their victim mentality. Yeah, I hate it too. Oh, hey. Okay. Okay. Hello, Amberlynn. Um, yeah, I don't know. So to me, it's like, yeah, so that's my thing. I know. <laughs> I know, Lindsay. <laughs> so yeah, that was crazy. If they reached for that far physically, they wouldn't have to complain about clothing sizes. Or Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, does anyone think Dolly Parton gets mad? Victoria's Secret doesn't carry her bra size. No one knows she intentionally made her body outside the norm. Oh, so, no, she knows she intentionally made her body outside the norm, so she adjusts clothing to fit her. Yeah, pretty much. So I agree with that. Um, let me see. So yeah, I don't know if that's the real Amber, but I'm guessing it is. <laughs> you guys could let me know. I don't know. Um, and it says it's continued, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, I don't know if, um, Like I said, I don't know if that's really Amber or not. Um, but maybe she's talking about my research with her. I don't know. You know, I could be wrong about some of the things I said about her. Okay. You have mentioned several times that those in poverty cannot become morbidly obese, which is not true. There's a large variety of research. Okay. Well, this is long. Um, poverty, both. Da, da, da. Okay, I'll have to go through this. This is really long. Okay, was in debt back then. Yeah, so the thing is, um, I'm talking about like if you literally cannot afford the food or if you don't have food security, it's very difficult. Yeah, I do think that the um, the actual effect of it is just that when you get more money, then you eat more. And I do think there is a psychological damage that occurs from food insecurity. So I would say that, but I would just say, like, if you had less money, it's not, it doesn't necessarily lead to massive weight gain, just the fact of not having money. But in terms of, like, struggling with money or... You know, like I've, I said in my take, I said that there are times when you do slightly better. And so when you do better, that's typically when you eat more, basically, is during those times where it's a little bit better. And that food insecurity definitely does affect it on terms of like a psychological level. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Often the societal aspects of weight loss a way that does not match the science. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, but I would say that that's a lot of times 
science in general, when it comes to the issue of obesity, it's difficult because they only do studies that last for eight weeks. Usually it's usually very short. So in terms of like nutritional science, the science just isn't that great because it's really hard to actually do a super long study that lasts like multiple years. So when we talk about certain scientific things, like, and I talk a lot about seed oil consumption, for example, on this, um, on this channel, people don't, they never test for seed oil consumption over multiple years or like reducing it for years and the effects that it has. So nutritional science is very limited in terms of like timelines, in terms of what happens over multiple years of somebody's life, because they don't study it that way. And it's difficult to, and the only thing that we can do are things like rat studies, which rat studies, they don't completely apply in terms of something like fructose. So a lot of times you'll hear people say like, high fructose corn syrup is really terrible for you, or it's bad to eat fruit, or it's bad to have high amounts of fructose. It's really unhealthy when it's actually very healthy for thyroid health. But people don't realize that they're using rat studies and rats aren't designed, evolved, whatever, to eat as much fruit as a human being is. So our livers can handle it and we have a much better result eating that. So there's a lot of those kind of glitches within science. And as far as like the whole, you know, social sciences and that kind of thing, it's a lot of correlation, not causation. So you have to think there is a correlation here, but what the cause is, you have to actually try to figure it out because correlation is not causation and only in social science will only make a correlation. But yeah, thank you, Amber. I appreciate that. But I wish you luck. I wish us all luck, honestly, on this journey. And I would just definitely, you know, figure out the mental health aspect because it's very tricky. I understand. I understand. I understand the criticisms because I've had a lot of like time on and off diets and been on cycles and that kind of stuff. And I know how awful it is and embarrassing it is and how like difficult it can be and how people see you after a while. Like I've had that same, those same views on me, but I just happen to figure it out luckily. And a lot of it is mental. Honestly, it is. That's a huge thing. Cause you have to just like, you have to not hate yourself. You know, it's really the biggest thing. And you have to just like, let yourself feel things. I think a lot of times when we are going to food for comfort, we don't want to feel our feelings. And like, we feel like we're going to die if we feel it, but we're not like it passes it always will pass. Feelings are like clouds in the sky. They, they pass eventually. And I think it's just about discovering that over time and just, you know, getting away from it. But I just, I worry, I worry about you, Amber. I do. Like, I think we all kind of do a little bit, even the shady ones, because it's kind of scary, but I do appreciate you documenting it because it has helped me in my recovery um, and helped further cement my recovery because you reminded me of where I've came from. So it's not like a judgment aspect. It's more so just like a, I remember that and I need to keep talking and I need to keep fighting this, you know, all across the board and like try to educate people the best I can about it so that people understand it. Cause I do want this to be resolved. So yeah, so that's my stance there. Um, I know Lindsay is funny. Alex is walking proof that his methods work. Amber, as of this week, is off track. I wonder who we should listen to. Oh, my gosh, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, no. I don't typically judge people who are struggling with it because I understand in that sense. The people that I tend to judge is somebody like Leo, who clearly has lost the weight and is totally lying. You know, that's somebody that I judge. <laughs> Um, how are you? Oh my gosh. See you next Tuesday. Asks. 
how are you measuring your body fat percentage? You speak about it in a very absolute which way, which makes me think you're doing it in an uncommon way. It, I'm just using a scale. It's just, I use an Inevafit scale. It's nothing like super fancy, but I think the only thing that really matters is just that you use a consistent measurement. So I can see that it's going down. And that's kind of what I will base my goals upon, if that makes sense. So I understand it could be a, you know, um, what's the word? I forgot what the word is. Approximate, you know, it could be an approximate type of thing, but that's okay. As long as I'm just using that same scale, then I can see where it's headed or, or what's happening. Yeah. So I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm going to you know, they're doing full body scans every week or anything. I'm not doing that, but it's just about you have that measurement and you can consistently see it. And I, it is an approximation, but there's approximations in most things. Like for example, even calories, they're all approximations as well, but it still works. So ultimately it works. Um, I'm not sure if I will, Lindsay, make more videos because I feel like I kind of said what I needed to say. And I just, I, I do, you know, like most people, I hope that Amber figures it out. That's basically it, you know, honestly. So I'm just, um, I'm glad that it was there and I'm glad that she's documented it because I, I might do it more so in the future just to kind of show this, like the cyclical aspect um, because I think people do not understand the cyclical aspect and they don't understand that it's not just like a lack of willpower, you know, and I talk a lot about that on this channel. It's not just willpower. It's like, it can be mental illness or sick cycles or these kinds of things, because some people that have BED, they have a lot of willpower. Like, you know, I lost 80 pounds twice in the same year, like that takes a lot of willpower, especially doing an, an extremely restrictive diet. Like I was doing basically zero carb keto and I was fasting. I was doing OMAD, you know, I was going to the gym fasted. Like that's a lot of willpower to use. So it's not really just willpower. That is the answer. It, there is an element of willpower, of course. It's but I think that's what I struggle with in this topic is that people are always thinking about everything I say as an absolute or completely black and white or just very, very like, you know, there's no nuance or no gray area in the things that I say. And that's difficult. And I think that's because things are so politicized in general. So people tend to you know, view everything as a black and white statement, which in nutrition and weight loss and these things, it's not completely like that. It usually isn't. Um, Magda says, my history with EDs was definitely a way to escape myself in pains. I couldn't run forever. Yeah. I mean, usually it's based in childhood trauma, honestly, especially in a severe case. And for me, it was, and it was severe, you know? <laughs> so it's not like your fault that you are traumatized as a child. Like that's not anybody's fault. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> okay. Part of me wonders if Amber's would, if Amber would have thrived and succeeded if she have kept her videos in digital scrapbook instead of making them available to the public as she goes. I don't know. I mean, that depends. I think people have different people. Some people want to live a private life and some people don't. It just depends on the person. Um, Jade had asked, do you consider your admitted focus on status a flaw or strength or something in between? Do you ever want to modify it or think it will change as your health changes? Um, I think it's just an inherent part of my personality. I mean, it's not like, I think there's nothing wrong with having status consciousness or being ambitious as long as you're not like overly jealous of other people or trying to sabotage others or trying to like, as long as you're not, like, super selfish, basically, which I would consider selfishness to be, like, I'm going to take all at the expense of everyone else, which is very much, like, what Leo did. That was a very selfish thing to basically give F.A. this win 
because he wanted to get them off of his back and then lie about his own weight loss because he wanted to save his own status. So he's kind of like, he got out of being fat and he's trying to prevent other people from getting out. That's selfish. You know, I think if you're ambitious and you have goals and you do things, but you're willing to support others and help others to succeed as well, and you're not like hyper competitive all the time, his weight loss lie was just that he didn't care about how he looked. That had nothing to do with how he looked, that losing weight didn't help him at all. It didn't help his mindset, these kinds of things. That's kind of what he insinuated in his rebuttal. And that is basically my biggest issue with him is that he did that. Because if he just wanted to say, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, or it's not that I have an aversion to how you look, he could have just said that. He could have just said, I didn't like how I looked, which is valid. You cannot like how you look. We have a right. You know, but in FA, they don't want you to say that, or they say you can't say that, which is crazy. And that is just insane to me because you have a right to not like how you look. I don't think you have a right to harm yourself and stuff because you don't like how you look, but you have a right to want to change, you know? And even like his supposed confidence that he supposedly has, some of it may be due in part to getting healthier, you know? Um, I think some of the FA is just high school mean girl mentality of keeping other girls from being competition by telling them they look hot when they think they don't. I agree. It's very like Regina George, which is nasty. So I think that kind of status consciousness is nasty, but there's a good version of it. And that's just being ambitious and hardworking and trying to produce good work and that kind of thing, which is totally good. So most of your character flaws and strengths, they are dependent on what you do with them basically. Okay. So I think we'll go ahead and move on from this. We'll talk about Leo. We'll go to the other Leo video because you guys want to talk about him. <laughs> I do too. So I didn't really get that much pushback on the, um, on my, my basically hate video of Leo. <laughs> where the folklore witch came out. Um, <laughs> let me see. Logan says, LOL, I've never met any FAs in real life and the FA sympathizing people I've met have all been thin. So they don't get it or actually care. I sometimes wonder if FA is really that big of a deal. I think it's, to me, it's a big deal just to people who are really, really fat or to people who are like, you know, especially using it to justify being super, super fat. I think it's really dangerous. So for that, I would say it does matter or it is a big deal. I also worry about the institutionalized push of these, these topics or this logic. That's very scary because that can, you know, obesity can, people can become obese. So if it's heavily promoted in society, then it can grow and people, more and more people can become obese. You know, it's not like it isn't purely genetic or whatever. Like they try to say, they try to act like that's the case, but it isn't the case. So it can actually get much worse. Did the Mean Girls musical even include the whole weight gain bar thing? I refuse to watch it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny, Lottie. I don't know if they would include it. I didn't see it. I just didn't want to see the musical aspect, but that's funny. Okay, so let's see. So let's go through. Megan Walker says, had a feeling this is going to happen. So we're, we're covering the video that I made where I basically bashed Leo. Megan said, had a feeling this was going to happen. He got a lot of hate reactions everywhere, which I was kind of shocked about. Even a few creators here on YouTube got pretty nasty with it for views and using it as rage bait. Very sad to change your personal opinions to please others for the almighty dollar. Yeah, or just to like be liked. Um, I responded and I said, he is so obviously con contradicting everything he says. He is a toxic person in general, so I don't know why he's pretending to be nice. I think Leo is one of the most cutthroat, status-oriented, 
types of people. And he is one of those toxic ones because he's trying to prevent other people from doing well, in my opinion, because that kind of thing of lying about your weight loss, lying about the truth about obesity, that is sealing the door. It's you, you were able to escape it and you're trying to shut the door behind you so nobody else can. And to me, that's awful. And that's a very toxic version of being status conscious or extremely competitive. And that is very much a thing in the gay community. Absolutely. So I think that can be really nasty. So, um, Caden says, great video. Leo is a sellout for this. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Mia says, he didn't say anything crazy or outrageous. Maybe it hurts, but we need to start living in reality instead of an idealized version of the world. I agree. It's just reality. Um, Mebite says, man, I hope he sees this video. Hard truths needed to be said. Witch hat adds a nice touch. I know how you, I love how you guys love the witch hat. I don't always wear it, but I think for that, I was just so angry. I was like, I just, I'm angry. And I was just feeling the witch. I was feeling it. Logan says, yeah, it makes sense that institutions promote it like they do alcohol, drugs, et cetera, since so many industries love mentally ill people, love sick people. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, and we have to look out for ourselves. You know, I'm not a Leo. I'm not going to be like, I'm looking out for you, even though I'm not at all. I'm going to just say we need to look out for ourselves. And at the end of the day, when it comes to this obesity issue, we have to, you know, save ourselves in a sense. You know what I'm saying? or you have to look to a higher power. It's not going to be another person can't save you from this. Um, Okay. Um, Kara says, this might be my favorite video from you. Already watched it twice. Like, damn, that Leo guy was frustrating to listen to. The sniveling and such, ugh, just like you said, weak. And you hit the nail on the head with the, so you're going to be even more horrible to these people by lying to them, by indulging their delusions. Keep up the good work, Alex. It's really important. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah. So I'm just so, I only had like one person try to argue with me. Um, Let's see. Institutions also try to make weight loss extremely hard unless you use a pharmaceutical solution. It's quite sad. So many weight loss programs praise seed oils slash obviously bad things. Yeah. When I think too, it's culturally too, like I said, like if I criticize soy, people rush to defend it. And it's like, why? That's so weird to me. Um, I'm not coming for anybody's soy, you know, I'm talking to a very specific group of people. You know what I'm saying? Especially super morbidly obese and, you know, people who are struggling with hunger, being tired, that kind of stuff. It's like, just eliminate it. Don't eat it you know, but you have to give it time. It takes a long time to see changes too. But it's like, that's kind of, it's just weird. Like those cultural pushes for things are weird. And I really do think too, there is an absolute inability. Like a lot of thin people do not understand that when you are really, really, really big, you have a very different physical reality. Like foods just hit you differently or you feel different based on what you eat. Like it's just different. It's not the same. Um, Like obviously no shade to David. David's great. But when he was talking about like when I told him that a good meal for a very fat person would be something like cheese, bacon, and orange juice, he, um, I feel like he wanted, he looked at me like, I had three heads, you know, and it's because to a thin person, that type of meal sounds extremely heavy, but to a a very, very fat person, that's actually a very satiating meal. And so it's like, you're just in a different zone. (laughs) I love that, Jens. Thank you. So, yeah. So one of my favorite comments was by Hunted by Stingrays. And they said, quote, my mindset triggered me, unquote. Boy, you know what triggers me about my old fat self? The painful wheezing when tying my shoes, the gasping for air because my lungs were compressed, my knees locking up whenever I had to squat down, the bottle of Tums eaten like candy due to chronic acid reflux. Log off, Leo, because this pandering is doing nothing but harming others. Exactly. 
exactly. Um, exactly. It's unfortunate that the FA community feels truth about weight loss as hate. It has nothing to do with who they are as inside as a person. It doesn't mean they are hated. Yes, I agree, Magda. I absolutely agree. Raf says, Raf Ray says, you're doing God's work. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. Um, so I only had one person push back on me on that video. And they said, he's literally saying the, the same thing in his video as the last question mark. All he's saying is, sorry, I said it in a way that hurt people, but he doesn't believe it's worth it to cry about brands not including you, which was the message in the last video as well. So what I said was, if he's saying the same thing, then why change it at all? And so I'm just like, I, he wouldn't change it if he wasn't changing the entire message, essentially, because if he didn't change anything at all, then why change it? I would just, just add and say, I didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm not saying that I'm repulsed by every fat person I see in the street. I'm just saying that I didn't like how I looked. And so I changed it. That would have been fine, but that's not what he said. <laughs> um, Silver Punk School asks, you've mentioned you are against GLP ones, except as a last resort. Is it because they are new or do you have other reasons? Um, Part of it is because they're new for sure. And some of the side effects, they kind of are similar to some of the thyroid issues I've had. So like extreme diarrhea, insomnia, these kind of things, they're kind of a sign of thyroid unhealth. And so I worry about its effect on thyroid mostly. Um, also, it can be you have to be careful in terms of like people tend to try to still binge while they're taking it, which is not good either because the food can just sit in there. So I think a lot of my issue with it is just also the rhetoric of it, like behind it, like that it's a miracle and all this stuff. Like it's not, you have to still eat an appropriate amount of calories. You should probably still be tracking. Right. Um, but as far as the last resort aspect, I, I when I say that I'm talking about, you know, if you're like five, six, 700 pounds or something, you might have such intense hunger that it might be life-saving, you know, in that situation. I don't know because I've never been that big. So I'm not going to like shut somebody down, you know, or like shut down weight loss surgery or something. But I do have an issue with it being completely normalized for somebody who has to lose 10 pounds. I think that's insane. It's like you would not have somebody get weight loss surgery if they need to lose 30 pounds. And I think that's what worries me about it is the, the rhetoric around it, how it's pushed and that kind of stuff. And I think it's important to just put a little bit of a break on that, not eliminate it, not that, you know, I'm not like against it for moral reasons or anything like that. I'm just saying like question it be wise with your use and understand it's not a miracle. And I think that's, I think what would really help. And it's not, you know, yeah, I would just always, for me, I always push for thyroid health as a major thing. And I don't know that it's the best thing. And that's what I worry about when it comes to it personally. So I wouldn't take it for that reason, because some of the side effects are things that I felt even without it. And they're not good signs, if that makes any sense. So I'd just be wary of it. Be wary, but you have to kind of make a decision sometimes. It depends. So it's not like I'm judging anybody. Does that make sense? Because if you're really, really big, then the obesity itself can be more of a risk. So it's just important to consider all to consider it. Uh, Mia says, people like Leo want to be liked so much. It's okay to not have everyone love everything you say. Yes, exactly. Lottie says, off topic, as someone who struggled with an ED on the opposite spectrum to be ED, I feel like there could be some good advice for weight loss methods that are low-key controversial but effective. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Lottie. <laughs> Mark says, yeah, I think a lot of FAs who are very obese are suffering from insulin resistance and other things and have very adrenal thinking. Yes, I agree with that completely, Mark. 
and they personalize everything like other addictions. Yes, I agree. Mark, when I was that heavy, the food was totally controlling me and was basically a part of my identity and made me delusional. Yeah. It's hypohaze is what I call it. It's like hypohaze behavior. You are in a haze. You don't see reality as it is. Like it can, and it can make it really difficult to navigate, especially relationships, which is why a lot of very, very big people end up in like toxic dynamics with other people because you can't read people or situations that well either. So it's very debilitating, not just physically, but also psychologically and relationally. And I try to bring that to the forefront too, because I, I hate it when all these FAs are like, it's not a big deal. It's just about how I look. It's just about this. And it's like, yeah, you're all talking about your string of, you know, horrific relationships. You're all talking about how you were with guys that treated you terribly all the time. And you're talking about how your friends are all toxic and, you know, all this different stuff. It's like, clearly it is affecting more than just how you look, you know? Yeah. Um, I actually feel more compassion towards FAs is needed to get them out of it. I think so. I mean, I think it's, it's a balance, right? You have to kind of get reality there, but you also have to like understand, you know, like a lot of FAs are extremely sensitive, but then they can be really vicious too. So it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult thing to navigate for sure. But how you don't handle it is you do not act like Leo at all. That is a horrible way of dealing with it. Um, Mia says, it's crazy that you can get it online without much trouble. To me, it seems like it needs to be at a doctor's office only. Yeah. I mean, it's still an, an more, it's, you know, we don't know long-term implications. So I would just be wary of it is all just be wary of it. Lottie says there's a character limit, but what I mean is methods for feeling not hungry. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it depends on, like, I think for most very fat people, it's it's really, it goes back to thyroid, because thyroid is kind of that first thing that falls, and then the other things fall in, like, a chain of command. So it's kind of like a line of dominoes. So if you fix that first domino, then down the road, it will fix the other ones. And then your hunger starts to normalize over time. It takes time, you guys. It takes years. Like I, I really think people need to understand it's not a fast process because you don't get to that point fast either. Like people don't just wake up super morbidly obese one day. Like it takes a long time to get to that point. I'm struggling explaining the hypo haze to my mom. She says she's or hash or haze to my mom. She says she's just always so hungry, but I appreciate her listening. Yeah. It's tough. Because I, I think that's one of the biggest things is you just, you do have to believe people when they say they're hungry because they are. And I think a lot of times people don't understand that because they're so used to like, they're so used to extremely like, I'm trying to think. They're used to like people that have BED lying about how much they're eating and stuff like that. So they don't trust somebody when they say that they're hungry. And typically when they say you're hungry or you're, uh, or they're tired, so they're eating for energy. But either way, a lot of times it is a physical thing. Um, Cammy says, why are you against therapy? You seem quite psychologically developed. How did you do it without therapy? Did you have other supportive people in your life or did you do it yourself? So I think it depends on the person. I'm not against therapy for every single person, but for someone like me, I'm very introspective and I'm very introverted and I'm very emotional. So it's like, I'm always emotional. I'm always introspecting. So going to therapy is not very helpful because I already do that all the time. So I think it just depends. You have to, meet, you have to figure out a person's needs. Like I found a lot of like very extroverted people that don't reflect they tend to do well in therapy. Um, I just am skeptical of certain therapists. Like, you know, when I see Sona Lee, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Um, I am so terrified of like therapists telling people horrible things or like watching prawn with them and telling them to, you know, enjoy fat bodies and all that. Like, that's crazy. You know, so when things like that happen, I think it's the same with anything. You just have to be skeptical. 
you know, of people that you're seeing and just like really think about it. And there are good therapists for sure. But yeah, I just think for me personally, it's not helpful because I already am introspective. So what I typically, what I did was really, I leaned on spirituality. I leaned on God. I leaned on religion to kind of create that understanding and to get out of that self-hatred aspect. And then for me, as such an introverted person, it was more so about getting out and doing things. So that was the other aspect was like, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to travel. I'm going to do this thing, right? I'm going to go out and do things. I'm going to, you know, I have this this video where I got up and read my poetry at a freaking poetry thing. Like you have to do things like that as a very introverted person to kind of break through that. So it's, it depends on the person. It's super individual. So I'm not like making huge judgments across the board. It's more so for me, it just didn't help me and it doesn't always help everybody. And I think people that doesn't help, they still need to find a path. So whichever path that is, that's what matters. Lottie says, my mom is stuck in FA social media too. Oh my goodness. That's not good. If I could get her to watch Alex, I would, LOL. <laughs> That'd be cool. Sona Lee would have me running for the hills too. Yeah. Mia says, I've noticed that my experience of hunger is so different from BMI 43 to 32. And it's so hard to explain how to others. It's like, it felt like a never ending cycle. Yes, it totally changes. And I think that also would help a lot of fat people to understand that if you can actually get down, you can actually like get, like, it will not always be that hard. Does that make sense? And I think a lot of times institutions, science, you know, media, if you look it up online, everybody says that it only gets harder, that it's only worse, that you're only hungrier, that you're only this, you're only that, you're never going to get out of it. Your brain is always going to be the way it is. It's never going to shift, blah, 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 blah. And like I told you guys earlier, that is based on studies that only last for eight weeks typically. So it's not true. So I think that it's important to like get that out there too. So definitely tell people, Mia, you know, tell people in your life, like my hunger is better. You know, my hunger is better too. It improved a lot from, you know, I think I had a BMI of like 49 or something to now it's at like 39 and it's so much better now than it was then. And that's important to know, like there is an end game. There's an end point. It will get easier, you know, but it takes years. It takes time. It's not a fast process. Okay. Cami says a lot of people in psych are the most mental psychologically damaged, which makes sense, but these people should be researchers or something. Yeah, I can see that Cami for sure. Um, Cammy says there are lots of bad therapists, which sucks. It's not very hard to become one, which is stupid. I know a therapist IRL who was a SEX addict and tried to see, yeah, that's really bad. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, you just gotta be skeptical. You know, I just think it's not a blind trust of people is all I'm trying to say. And you could say that for me too. Like totally, you know, I'm, I'm here. You know what I mean? Since I've been following your protocol and lists the extra weight, my hunger and lost the extra weight, my hunger is way less. Yeah. I mean, it does get better. Your system does heal. Your brain can heal too. You know, I don't know if my brain will be what it could have been or whatever if I was never fat, but it does heal. Like I'm not in the hypo haze. I don't have weird dynamics with people anymore. You know, I don't have these issues that I used to. So I think it's like, it is a part of it for sure. Um. I know that many psychologists and dietitians get into these fields to heal themselves. Yeah, I think that can happen sometimes for sure. Okay, so we'll go back into this comment I was talking about. So I said, if he's changing the same, if he's saying the same thing, then why change it at all? And the person responds, just to let people know his intention wasn't to be rude. He's not changing his stance, in my opinion. I think it's okay to say, I'm sorry my message upset you, but this is what I believe and why I believe it. I wasn't sharing with the intention of being an ass. I was sharing with the intention of sharing and that's it. And I responded and I said, hard disagree. He completely changed the message in a way that is hella toxic. You just can't see it. For example, stating his mental state, quote unquote, had nothing to do with his weight, which is clearly untrue. And um, then somebody says he is lying about 
Oh, no, then I said he is lying about weight loss, lying about his experiences, encouraging further cancellations, and further stating it is okay to be fat or even very fat. If he just stated what you said, I wouldn't have made this video and his video would have been much shorter. Yeah. So that's the thing too, is people don't, they don't always, like, he went on for like three minutes. You know, he, he should have just said one sentence. If it was really just, I wasn't trying to hurt anybody. It's not that I'm disgusted by fat people, blah, blah, blah. That's what he could have said. That would have been fine. I wouldn't have even made a video about it, you know? So anyways. Okay. So there we go. I think we're good on that. Lindsay says the most toxic people I know are almost are, are always posting about how much therapy they're doing. LOL. Yeah, I think it just depends. Like if you're if it's not working, then just, you know, you gotta add something to it. I'm not one to be like F at all or whatever. I'm not like that. I just think it's not, it isn't, it doesn't help every single person all the time. That's all I'm trying to say. And it can help in tandem with other things. It's just if you're not getting better, then you need to do something else, you know, or you need to add something to what you're doing, basically. Um, Lindsay says, I worry some therapists don't get the whole picture, so they'll enable the bad behavior since they only hear the one side. That can happen too. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Violet. I was not impressed with it. Okay. So I guess with that, we'll look at the glitter and lasers comments. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so Dixton, Baby Angel, we had a little bit of a spat, but not really, not totally. It wasn't terrible or anything, but we just disagreed a little bit. So they said, quote, there's a lack of cultural awareness in the West. Why do you have to say that? Why do you have to specify the West as if it's opposition? The East, as if it's opposition, the East has some way or wisdom about fatness we don't know about. That's so weird and unnecessary to specify and doesn't serve to further any arguments at all. Can we please stop hating on our own culture for once, please? Attitudes and understanding about being obese has nothing to do with where you grew up, almost every culture looks the same towards being obese. So I responded, I, you have to remember, I'm always in combat mode in comments. So sometimes I'm trying to be like, okay, I'm trying to be a little bit more chill because I'm like, not every single person that, you know, responds or says something is like against me or whatever, but I'm always in combat mode. Like, Hashtag Taylor Swift, hashtag The Archer, combat, I'm ready for combat. Like, that's how I approach comments all the time. It's just part of my personality, okay? I'm always ready to fight. So, <laughs> so I, of course, was myself. I said, other cultures do not see super morbid obesity as healthy or totally non-debilitating. A typical Western person may intellectually acknowledge that obesity is unhealthy, but then they will immediately advocate for morbidly obese and small people to train as hard as possible. Or they will say, quote, it's totally fine if you want to stay fat. <laughs> Leo, cough, cough, Leo. Other cultures view it as automatically debilitating and thus discourage it in general from the outset. So yeah, like if we were in East Asia and somebody was gaining weight, they would be on them immediately. They'd be like, you're gaining weight. It would just be like, boom would ne probably never get to be like small or like totally huge. That would probably, it, it does happen there, but it's super rare. I think it's usually like, you know, it's just different. It's like very, very, very rare compared to here, compared to the West. So anyways, um, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Um, criticizing something does not mean hating something. Do not project hatred of the West onto me. I, for the record, I do not hate the West. I don't. You know, the West is obviously, it's probably the only culture that I can have, you know, somewhat of a full life as a super gay person, super femi, whatever person. I appreciate the West, love the West, etc. 
you know, I can sing its praises all day, but I really do want to criticize it too, where it needs to improve. And on the fatness issue, there's a delusion around it. Absolutely. Absolute delusion around the issue of fatness and obesity in the West. It's crazy. So I think, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lottie says my BS Asian grandma first commented when she met me, what, first comment when she met me was about my weight. It truly is just different cultures. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't, it wouldn't happen. I don't know. Like, it's not acceptable. It's just not. And in the West, it's like, oh, that's too mean. I can't say that, which it's like, I don't know that that's necessarily the best way to deal with it. But it's like, I'm not saying the East has all the answers. I'm just saying like, it's not taken well care of in the West is all I was trying to say clearly because it's getting worse. So um, I said, it is Western nations that are having some of the worst issues with obesity, which is what this channel is about. Other cultures that are getting worse are learning and adopting cultural values and eating habits that have been developed, especially in the United States. But places like Canada have fully embraced fat acceptance and Britain is well on its way and is currently being taught at the university level in Australia. So it is starting to break ground in Australia too, which is why you see some of those FAs that are probably in college and they have those Aussie accents because it's spreading. And we already know Canada. I mean, my gosh, Marissa Matthews, hello, Canada, right? Major. And there are some British people, but it's a lot less, but still it's growing there. Like it's becoming a thing and it will just continue to spread. The ideology can spread. So it's like, if it doesn't stay in the West then it will go everywhere else eventually. And you do see it in places like Mexico, but not really, but you see the food habits and stuff in Mexico changing the demographics and people are getting fatter and fatter. Um, okay. Anyways. So I said, that's just what I know off the top of my head. Look at where the majority of fat activists are coming from and then try to tell me this isn't a Western issue. Get a grip. And so then they responded and they said, okay, I get what you're saying now. For me, it wasn't clear in the video. I see so many FAs hating on Western culture or the West. I admit my mind jumped there. Yeah, obesity wouldn't be tolerated in a lot of other places versus here. We seem to have gotten rid of the shame around it. I really didn't need the get a grip. Sorry. I'm always ready for combat. I am admittedly. Your meaning was not at all clear from your video to me. I actually liked most of your videos of the ones I watched. I appreciate that. I should like the comment, but yeah, <laughs> so I'm not trying to be, I am always ready for combat. Okay. It's, it's an issue. I struggle with that a little bit, a little bit. Um, <laughs> Japan government playing Flappy Bird with their citizens' weight and pay. That's interesting. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Lottie. Um, my uncles and aunts living in Africa were really shocked about my weight gain and were never shy about commenting about it when I was young to now. Yeah, totally can see that, Mia. Totally can see it. Um, Magda says the Japan government has punishments for overweight people. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. See, that's harsh. Um. Wow. Go too high and you're out. Yeah, that is more of a fat phobia for sure. Yeah. Whew. Wow. Okay. I don't know if that would help people either. But yeah, so I'm not saying that that's the best way, but I'm just saying the West has an issue for sure. Okay. Um. Let's see. I'm going to look at top comments here. So somebody said, I don't, um, Boring Deborah says, I love the username. Boring Deborah says, I don't understand how this wasn't a wake up call for her. She will not make it to 40. So she's really close to making it to 40. I think she probably will. Um, we're talking about glitter and lasers. Um, but basically I just, I think that she, she might, part of my intuition, and this is just what I feel, I guess, which could be true or false. But part of what I feel about glitter and lasers is I feel like she does these things to help give her motivation because she's struggling with motivation in her weight loss journey. So I feel like she's constantly putting herself in these really scarring positions or these extremely like, you know, I would think maybe she's really losing weight from an adrenal place or an adrenaline based weight loss. And so she's trying to stress herself out 
and she's trying to create a traumatic experience to motivate her and give her energy to move forward, which is not something that I would suggest. I always, I'm very against an adrenal weight loss path, especially for super morbid obese. I promote a thyroid path to weight loss, which would mean lowering stress as much as possible. Um, it's not possible to completely eliminate it. But I have a different approach, which is, you know, we're already so stressed being as big as we are. Let's try to keep down the stress as much as we can. So while I do think some of those wake up call experiences can help because we can be motivated to start the journey. Once we've started the journey, it's good to minimize suffering because you already have the motivation. That's what I would say to Glitter and Lasers. She already has the motivation but she's struggling with, with sustaining it because she's doing it in a stress-based way. That's my opinion from what I've seen. Um, Magda says, I mentioned the Japan situation only to remind us here in the West, we have a lot of freedom of choice and acceptance. Yes. Ladia says, how old is Glitter and Lasers? I, I don't, I didn't verify it, but people in my comments were saying she's like 39. So I could be wrong because I didn't look it up myself, but that's just what I have here. Um, she acts a lot younger than her age. Like she's desperately trying to keep attention almost. I think too, you know, I was talking to my grandma about the situation and my grandma, you know how grandmas are, they can just cut through the BS. And she just said that she's trying to prove that she can do it. So most, and I agree, it's just a very simple answer. And I think that my grandma's totally right in that she's basically just trying to prove that her weight isn't limiting her. So it's either like what I said, that she's trying to have these scoring experiences to motivate herself, or that she's just desperately trying to prove that her weight doesn't limit her at all, even though it clearly does. And it's kind of, that's kind of sad if that is the case, because it's very clearly, it does limit. Um, Lindsay says, I think Anna focuses too much on going too hard, too fast instead of slow and steady. Yes, which is probably boring to her and her viewers. Yeah. It can be boring, you know, it can. Sometimes boring is good. Like last year was the most boring year of my life. And it was a very healing year because my brain healed through the boredom, which I know is awful to say, but it's very difficult. And I do think boredom is such a huge issue in weight loss. It's so difficult to face, but it is one of those demons in a weight loss journey that you must face. It's just one of those things. So I think she, she is probably tr maybe trying to avoid boredom too, but you don't want to avoid boredom through like trauma because it can be really stressful, you know? Um, Lady Hawk says, aside from doing dangerous activities at her size, I don't understand why she is wearing friggin' bikinis to do these active adventure vacations. I'm all for wearing what you want, but to actually, but it's actually dangerous to expose that much skin when you are climbing rocks and squeezing through caves. At her size, her skin is likely fragile due to being stressed so much. I have my own active swimmer that covers up and is designed for summer activities. I don't get why she doesn't prioritize safety over showing off that big girls can wear bikinis in these situations. That is dead on. That was such a good comment. I honestly, it, it sounds crazy, but a lot of how glitter and lasers acts, it is almost as if she has zero self-preservation or something. Like it's really weird. Like she doesn't act in a way that is safe a lot of the time. And it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know what to think about it, honestly, because I don't think it's good. Um, yeah. I mean, she's going to hurt herself if she keeps this up. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not one of those people. I don't think it's good to get injured. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, you know, I think when you're in that big ass state, big, big, big state, like you're in a diff difficult situation and you have to be as gentle as you can because it's tough. It's hard on the body. You're not well. And so I don't agree with like pushing it to the limit and doing all these things. It's like you're already pushed at a limit. Like now that I'm getting a little healthier and I'm more of just morbidly obese, I can push a little bit more. Like I can go to the gym twice a week now. So I can do, I do full body twice a week. I can do that now. You know, I can continue to walk. I can do my YouTube channel. I can do my other job. You know, I can do all this stuff and kind of push myself a little bit more to do more things in life because I'm healthier. But it's like, you have to be 
kind of gentle and I still wouldn't run at the size I'm at. You know, I might not ever run. Honestly, I think it's, I don't think it's the best for thyroid health, but because it's very stressful on the body and I just don't know if I'll ever do it, but it's like, if I ever did, I'd be thin before I'd start running. Like I would not do that now ever, like not even at this point. And she's a lot, she probably has, you know, she's probably a lot bigger than I am at this point, you know, in terms of like our height to weight ratio and all that. So it's like for her knees and all that, it's tough. It really is tough. Um, Lindsay says, my sister jumps off cliffs in Hawaii and she wore a bikini and her thigh and calf got scraped up when she fell down the rock. Safety first. Yes. Safety before vanity. Absolutely. Totally agree with that. Um, even going without shoes is bad. One sharp shell or a Lego can cause a really bad fall. I can't imagine how much harder a recovery would be with the added weight Anna has. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm thinking she was wearing shoes at least, but I don't know. Like she, maybe not. Maybe I didn't see that correctly. I don't know. I, like I said, some of the ways she acts, it's like she doesn't have any self-preservation. You have to care about yourself to lose the weight. Like you just do. You have to take care of yourself. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things that a lot of very fat people don't understand is like how much maintenance and effort your body actually takes to take care of. And that's for life. That's not just during weight loss. That's in general. And it took me a long time because I'm very much like a cerebral, like in my head person. And so throughout my journey, I've had to really be more in my body and like take care of my body. And now I'm used to it, but it was a big thing when I was just starting where it's like, gosh, this takes so much effort to maintain my body. And it's like, it takes everybody that much effort, you know, that's just a part of life. Okay. Mike Vasca says, this is disingenuous. She puts herself in this situation. Also, what is up with the dramatic music? So I think again, she's probably trying to prove she can do it. That's what I think it is. It's like a proof thing. It's like a, I told you guys I could kind of thing. Or she thinks it's inspirational, but it's not always inspirational because it's like, like when a fat person sees her talk about how she wanted to cry on that trail, it's like, that is not inspirational. That is like, like most fat people see that and they're like, they don't want to do it. They're like, I'm never going to do that hike. Oh my God. That's how most fat people will see that. So I don't think it's actually helping. Whereas if she just had like a nice time, and she's just on an easy trail and she's just walking and enjoying that, that would actually be inspirational. So it's like, we have to meet people where they're at. Like, I don't know. I just, it, I don't think it was that great. Um, I'm just assuming she wasn't wearing shoes on her boating video. She was already in a swimsuit, so I could be wrong. Well, I'm talking about like the hike. I don't know, you know, obviously on the boat and stuff she wasn't, but I mean on the hike, I'm like, I hope she was. I really hope she was. Dang. Um, so Impassion says, I'm also puzzled as to why she puts herself through this. She seems like she's always trying to prove that her weight isn't an obstacle. Then she pointedly tries to run marathons and go on compact cruise ships where her weight is even more of an obstacle than usual. Yeah, it's so, it's like she's trying to scar herself. I don't know. Or is she trying to raise awareness about how things are fat inclusive when marathons and ships just can never really be fat inclusive because of the inherent nature of what it is? It makes no sense on whatever level I'm thinking she might be operating on. I don't think it makes sense either. I don't. It's really crazy to me, honestly. Um, Elise says, I've always been fat, but under 300 pounds, I've never struggled to get out of the pool, but I always choose the stairs, not the ladders. Horrifying to see her struggle so much. So yeah, it's, it's tough. And I just, I'm glad she posted it in a way, because like I said, it's good to raise awareness about the debilitating nature of obesity, but for her to try to act like it's, it's inspirational and stuff. Like, I just don't think so. I just, I'm not seeing it personally. Um, that's fine. I feel like she's trying to live like she's lost the weight before achieving that goal. Yeah. She might be trying to do like a manifestation type of thing, which it's like that can work in certain contexts, but 
she's so big, you know, you have to understand that. Like I, sometimes I struggle with that too, even at where I'm at now where I'm like, yeah, I'm still big, you know, I still have to really focus on that or pay attention to that. Um, okay. Okay. The thing for me is that Anna over the last seven to eight or whatever years has been heavier. And when she started lighter, her size now shouldn't be a shock to her brain. The toilet scene was all for show and sympathy. In my opinion, she's something she does a lot. Yeah. So I, I just, I don't know if it's a delusional thing or if it's like, I don't, she doesn't want to accept where she's at or something. It is weird. Cause I remember when she had the target thing, it was kind of similar, you know, where she's like, why am I not able to fit in these clothes? And it's like, because you're still huge, like you're still really fat. Like, and that's, it's just a reality of the situation, you know? So I don't know. It could be an act. It could be a troll. Absolutely. Um, she could have been trolling in that situation. Who knows? But either way, if she is just trolling, that's horrible. You know, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, Terry says Anna is very worrying to watch. She needs to be more gentle with herself and slow down. Yes, I agree. Yeah, Mia says something she says a lot. I'm so surprised about what my body can do. It's like she's testing her body to see its limits. Yeah, and it's like, that's kind of scary to see. Honestly, it's like, oh my gosh. And I don't, you know, I'm not thinking, I don't think that the, the impact is that great. Because people who are super morbidly obese and stuff, like, they're more sensitive and stuff. And so it's like when they see that, they're like, oh, my gosh. You know, it's like horrifying. It's like a horror show for somebody who's really big. Like, I was telling, you know, both my mom and grandma, they're both SMO. And I was telling them about what she was doing. And they're, like, horrified at, at what I was saying she was doing. It's like the reaction that this creates not just in thin people, but in very fat people is not like inspiration. It just isn't. Yeah. Lottie says, agreed, Terry. I always cringe when I watch her putting herself in danger. One bad injury and she won't be able to exercise like she wants while she recovers. It can be really discouraging. Yeah. Injury is something that you want to always avoid because it can slow you down drastically. And, you know, having a sustained, slow, gentle effort is so much more important than going really, really hard and then having an injury and then you have to stop. It's like you always want to be steadily building over many years or, you know, every over many months, years, time, because the more you're building, the better off you're going to be. And that's how you do it. You build it like a block, like a tower of blocks or in some cases, a house of cards depending on how bad your situation is, but you have to slowly do it and just let it cement and solidify. And then you build on that more and you just do that over years. You know, that's why I don't like the biggest loser because I really think it created a huge psyop on people. And they really think like, I have to lose the weight as fast as I can. And you really don't. That's not true for most people. It just isn't. And that's okay. And that should be normalized. You build it over time. Okay. So Lindsay says, Anna focuses too much on playing the fitness influencer role than doing the slow and steady work behind the scenes. Yes. Yes. I mean, I think it's important to, you know, I try my best to not care about image when I'm talking about this because I actually, I want the issue to be solved. So I will talk about, my weight's plateaued or I've gained weight. Like I talked about it. You're not going to see that a lot on channels like mine. You know, a lot of times people cover that stuff up. I talked about it, you know, for a long time, I kept repeating how I gained 30 pounds in November and December. That's drastic. But then it came right back off in January and because it was more hormonal and fluid based, but I still talked about it. You know, I didn't cover it up. You guys could see it happening. But then it came right back off because that's, it can happen with hormone fluctuations, fluid fluctuation, especially in a super, a super morbidly obese person, they can be drastic swings in fluid and these types of things, you know? So I, I talk about that. I don't think Anna would ever talk about that because it would make her look bad. And it's like, 
it's not good to lie either. Just isn't good to lie. Yes, Terry says slow and steady wins the race. Exactly. I can understand her eagerness for fast results too, though, Lottie says. I'm the same way. I'm the same in a way, and learning patience is really hard sometimes. Yeah, it can be. It can be. I totally get it. And I wish she'd talk about that. That would be helpful if she talked about that, you know? Um, and then somebody said, I'm not disturbed, I'm, but I'm frustrated. It's just a pattern. She wants to do cool stuff. And she wants to prove she can do what other people can do. Then she basically, she does basically nothing to prepare. She just assumes she's ready from the start. She wants to be a runner only to realize she literally cannot run and never has. And is obviously annoyed by this. She wants to go to a beach and is unprepared to walk in sand. She goes on trips and doesn't research seat sizes or other accommodations. True. It would be great to see her planning and considering these things in advance. Yes, that would be good too. As actual tips and advice to plus size travelers. Instead, she YOLOs until she's slapped with reality every time, always has a meltdown over it, and then claims she learned so much from the experience. She needs, she then learns nothing. The whole cycle repeats. Just frustrating. Yeah. When I talked about it in terms of it being disturbing, it's talking about especially towards really, really fat people, it can be disturbing to see that because it's hard. Like, I feel like a fat person could have watched, like a very, very smo person could have watched her struggle that way. And then they go and eat because it's like very traumatic to see that, or it's like very stressful or disturbing is the right word. It's like disturbing to see that because you see yourself in that you get scarred and then they probably would go eat after. Like, I don't think the impact is positive as she thinks she is, as she thinks it is. I really don't. Um, but that being said, I'm, you know, I can talk about the content and hopefully it was okay. But that's why I was very like, this part disturbed people, you know, and I, I talked about it very gently in the video. A lot of people didn't like how gentle I was in the video, but it's because I'm keeping in mind the possibility of very fat people watching. And it is very disturbing. It was even disturbing for me. And I've lost a lot of weight. And it was still like, ooh, this is hard to watch. Like, it's very hard to watch because a lot of very fat people, they don't like to watch like my 600 pound life or things like that because it's it's very disturbing to people who are struggling with the issue. As far as thin people or whatever, I think some people were probably disgusted but that's different. I was talking about it from that perspective. So I think some people don't understand because I try to be gentle when necessary and aggressive when necessary. Like I'll go either way <laughs> whenever I feel like is right. Um, but yeah, I have both capabilities, obviously. Terry says, I don't think Anna is capable of being honest with herself or others yet. She overshares, but she still can't get real. Yeah, I would agree. It's tough. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Lottie. Or growing my hair out. I always give up when it's not growing fast enough. That's funny. Magda asked, do you ever feel the pressure to keep losing weight for the channel? I could imagine some days it's hard. I struggled with it a bit last year. Um, I got, but I was also very serotonin oriented last year, which makes you kind of like very rigid and weird and like obsessive and so I had some weird moments where I would like weigh on the scale like 10, 15 times and like go to the bathroom over and over again to try to get a certain number. So I would do stuff like that to try to get like if I was going to break into another five pound bracket or something like that. But I don't blame you guys. I blame the hormonal thing that was happening in my brain because I was just very obsessive about everything and extremely one track minded last year. It was very challenging. It was a very challenging year. But luckily, I'm doing better now. So I actually don't weigh myself a lot of days now. I'm just so like, because my serotonin stuff is going away. So I, it's like, you know, I barely weigh myself now. I don't care, especially because I'm more plateaued. So it's like, I don't even care anymore. Like, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And it's that kind of thing. So it's a totally different mindset. But I think a lot of people that are very fat, they might experience that serotonin thing or issue. And then they think they're developing a restrictive ED. And it's like, no, it's like a hormonal issue occurring due to weight loss. Your brain is trying to recover um, and all these different things. And that's what happens. And again, people don't have awareness of that. So it's tough. But yeah, so in that sense, I did. 
but it was just that shame serotonin response thing I was going through last year. So there was a pressure, but it was very internally created because even if I wasn't doing a channel, I still would have been obsessively weighing. I still would have been doing that. Whereas this year, I don't think I will because I'm just like, whatever, you know, <laughs> I just don't care anymore. Um, okay. <sighs> Growing my hair. I already read that. Okay. Anna acts like, Mia says, Anna acts like she has been a skinny athlete for most of her life and woke up one day at her size. I don't know if she grew up thin, but it seems like she still hasn't accepted her size. Yeah, I agree. A little snowflakes or snow fairy saga said, just saw your collab with not David. Love it. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm glad you do. Lindsay says, um, that must be what she means by living in a larger body. She does a hermit crab and this is her new house. Oh my gosh. Oh, you guys are funny. But yeah. Let me see. So I think that's pretty good. I don't think I got any hate on that one. I don't. The only hate, I, it wasn't really hate. It was just like, um, it was just, the, oh my gosh, it was just like, you're going too easy on her. You're going too easy on her. And it's like, I'm not going to go super hard on somebody that's not a fat activist or that's not pushing that rhetoric, you know, cause I'm not like, I understand the struggles, you know what I'm saying <laughs> on that sense. And the other thing too, is like, um, I was gentle mostly for the viewer, if that makes sense. Yes. Please do tap the like button. Thank you, Terry. Um, so I was mostly focused on that aspect of that's why I will change my style. Sometimes it's to get a certain message across because I needed big people, especially to listen to that message or to listen to that video because people have to understand the reality of how debilitating it is. And they think it's hard for a lot of people to accept it because it's not an easy thing to get out of. And so it's not a fast shift and that's difficult for people to understand i love david <laughs> oh my gosh david <laughs> i'm doing good i'm doing good <laughs> oh my gosh um let me see here we're at we're at fu i'm working on becoming the dean of fat university <laughs> aka fu <laughs> Okay, let's see. Yeah, I don't think I have any, I don't know. If I do, then whatever, I guess. Yeah, I think I'm good on that. So yeah. Yeah, we need some FU. Um, I would love to do like a FU like Letterman jacket or something. Maybe we'll do that in the future. <laughs> if I can get this channel off the ground because that would be really fun. <laughs> have that at university you know totally uh, <laughs> oh my god that'd be so funny yeah f you merch for sure i love it <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh Lindsay, that's insane that's really scarring <laughs> the irony of that uh <laughs> You guys probably could see my alma mater, maybe. Alma mater. Ugh. Oh, my gosh. But yeah, I think with that, we're pretty gooch. So do you guys have any other questions before I before I go? Gosh, I need to write that down, though. F.U. merch, for sure. I will have to do that. At least like a T-shirt in the future, for sure. Because I do like the... I like the fat scholar thing on Fridays. I think it's fun. Um, but yes, Leo is totally on probation. Just wanted you to know that. <laughs> Are you infatuated by David's mustache just like the rest of us? Hmm. I don't know. I'm pretty mustache neutral. I'm mustache neutral, but I think I think David has a very nice sounding voice. He does he gives good radio. 
good radio voice, good ASMR voice. He'd be a good ASMR artist. But I talked to him last night and he's like, I don't want to do ASMR because it would be like being a straight man that does gay prawn. And I was like, okay, okay, fine, David, kill the dreams. But yeah, I think David has a very nice voice. <laughs> you guys are like starting the rumors that I'm in love with David. I'm not, I promise. I promise. <laughs> I promise I'm not. I don't usually associate with guys that I'm like, you know, because I'm too crazy. As David asked me last night, he's like, you seem like the type of person that's just really obsessive. He's like, are you obsessive? And I'm like, yes. I am. <laughs> oh, no problem, Mia. I'll be heading off relatively soon. But yeah, we're just kind of winding down. But yeah, I was like, I literally, you know, when I'm in love with somebody, oh my gosh, I am obsessed with who I'm in love with. It's tough. It can be tough. Like, I'm never going to be on here and be like, I'm amazing to be in love with and I'm amazing and whatever. Like, no. I'm, you know, I have had a couple guys in love with me, but, you know, as Taylor, as the queen says, um, it's, if it's, what does she say? Some, oh my gosh, I'm having a blank moment, having a blank space moment. Oh my God, I can't think. But she says, it's going to be forever. It's going to go down in flames. Something about like, you can let me know if the high was worth the pain, something like that. Oh my gosh, I'm failing as a Swifty. Oh my God, the Swifties are going to cancel me, you guys. Oh, gosh, that's bad. I am totally flubbing it. But I do love the line where she says, grab your passport and my hand, because I love foreign guys. It's bad. I do. I'm a foreign girl, foreign girly. Um... I love the players too. Uh, this song is me. She actually wrote Blink Space about me, you guys. That's what you need to understand, okay? <laughs> yeah, so she says, oh gosh, I can't even read this. Jeez, what is wrong with me? Okay, you can tell me when it's over if the high was worth the pain. Yes, that's my, that's what I was trying to say. Yes. You can tell me when it's over if the high was worth the pain. That's what I have to say to the guys who loved me. <laughs> you can let me know. <laughs> oh, my God. Because I can make the bad guys good for a weekend, you know? I'm just kidding. That's so bad. Anyways, that song is about me. If the Swifties kick you out, those of us with absolutely no Taylor lore knowledge will accept you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Lottie. I can spread the message. I can spread it. Um, David asked, if you could have one wish, what would you name it? If What do you mean? Is that like a lyric or something? Oh my gosh. David's in here and I'm like twirling my, you know, I'm twirling my hair over here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I do love how David's thumbnail was so like totally like lover era. Like he was, he messaged me. He's like, looks like we're in love with each other, but I think that's okay. And I'm like, whatever. I'm like, if you're down for the gay jokes, then go for it. Because basically <laughs> that's what you're opening yourself up to. <laughs> I love your Taylor Swift feud. Ha ha, love and hate. Yeah. Well, yeah, I go both ways with Taylor, but I do, at the end of the day, I love Taylor. I do. At the end of the day, I love her. Um, but I don't think she would be my friend because I'd be too honest with her and she'd be like, Cause she's very like, I want yes people around me all the time. <laughs> but anyways, you guys, thank you so much. This is fun. So I think I'm going to have to verify, but I think Amberlynn Reed may have been in this stream, which is a little crazy, but kind of cool, kind of exciting. Um, but we shall see what happens in the future. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, thank you, David, for showing up. Thank you for having me on your channel. I will be live streaming with David more, of course, because it's fun. Because, I don't know, David's fun. And um, I'll be trying to do some more collabs in the future when I'm not too introverted. I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to do more. But yeah, I appreciate everybody's support and stuff. Loves it. Um, Mark says, I wish I had friend, more friends who are really honest like Alex LOL. Oh, I appreciate that. But yeah, 
Yeah, we are going to do more. I do want David on, on my channel too. And I've told him multiple times. I just have to plan it. So, you know, I might twirl my hair a little bit when I'm talking to him, but you know, I'm just kidding. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much. I will see you guys again next week. So have a good weekend. Bye guys.